of the neo-Nazis. The neo-Nazis commit violence in the name of an ideology, murderous ideology, that killed 25 million people in the, in the 20th century. These people, Antifa, are neo-communists who commit violence in the name of an ideology that killed 100 million people in the 20th century. They are morally indistinguishable and they need to be rejected by the Democratic Party, just like Republicans have rejected the neo-Nazis. Yeah, so it's like pick your, fam your, your favorite extremist, uh, you know, Hitler or Stalin, uh, yeah. And and you sort of see the intersection of, of the, you know, the, the background, the fundamental theories of these two groups. Jonathan Trilley, do you agree with that? Well, what what concerns me most about Antifa is that they're built on this intolerance for free speech, as they recognize. Uh, that they don't believe that people have a right to speak freely, that they believe that some people are unworthy of free speech because of their views. And certainly Professor Beret has gone into that in his book uh, with some apparent support uh, with the notion that n not all speech is equal. And that really challenges a basic premise of our country. Uh, once you start to create this generation of speech intolerant kids, uh, the question is where are we heading? Uh, who will decide what views are unworthy and what are not. And I think that the problem I have with Nancy Pelosi's statement is this effort to try to draw distinctions is not necessary and in itself is a bit dangerous. All, when we're, we're really denouncing extremist groups, we're trying to keep others from speaking through intimidation or violence. That should be the measure, and I don't see the distinction. Yeah, you know, j just saying that you don't see an equivalence in some ways, uh, you know, it ought to be fairly easy, Mark, to say that that violent extremists are bad. No? Absolutely. Look, that's what everyone said about Donald Trump. They said, uh, you know, condemning Nazi neo Nazis is the easiest thing a president should be able to do. Well, condemning neo communists should be pretty easy as well. I mean, they, 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 what's amazing is that the, the Democrats have declared themselves the resistance. They're not just the opposition, they are the resistance. Antifa claims to be the pointy edge of the spear of that resistance. So it is incumbent on Democrats to make clear that they reject not just their violent tactics, but their ideology and their, and their doctrines, just as it was incumbent on Republicans, and Republicans did uh, re make clear that they rejected the neo-Nazis and white yeah. supremacists. Uh, I mean, we're, talking about, the, we're talking about sort of, you know, the tips of, of these two movements. And then when you go down the chain a little bit, Jonathan, you have regular college students, you know, who, who think that they're on board something that is meaningful here. Why is that? That's what, that's what worries me, is first of all, you have academics who become enablers. Uh, people like Professor Bray, who's written this book and, and seems to support many of the values of this group, not necessarily all of them, uh, but you have a lot of faculty that uh, really support not just um, uh, Antifa, but also speech codes and the erosion of free speech. We've had uh, professors who have actively engaged in tearing down displays, even assaulting, uh, in, in one case in California, pro-life uh, uh, demonstrators. Um, she wasn't fired. She was criminally charged, but the faculty stood behind her. And so what's troubling is that we're losing our, our, our sense of values that define us as, an, as academic troubling. institutions. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Jonathan, good to see you both tonight.